Hello and welcome. Come on in. I'm chatting with Mr. Richard Franklin, the director of Psycho 2 from Universal Oaks. Richard, nice to see you. Welcome to AM Live. Thank you. And you come to Psycho 2 by way of at least two other horror films so and a career both in Australia and in America. So uh -huh. let's try and trace this a little bit because I guess you're a fan of horror films generally maybe, huh? Yes, although I prefer to call them thrillers. In the case of Hitchcock, I think he never really made a horror film. Perhaps Psycho was the closest he ever came, so it's, uh, it's fair, I guess, to say Psycho 2 is at least partly a horror film, but it's other things as well. And Hitchcock himself was a man of two countries, I yes. suppose. Do you see yourself as that as well? Uh, well, it's becoming that way. I went to USC here in the 60s, and then I went back to Australia. I was born in Australia, of course, and, uh, and now I'm back here again. I was involved in uh, another American picture, which was the Blue Lagoon, which we shot in Fiji, which was halfway between. So I live somewhere in the middle of the <laughs> A ocean. A man of many parts, so yeah. to speak. With Psycho, 23 years old now, and a whole burden, let's call it, of tradition behind it, did you feel that weight upon your shoulders? Because you yourself are a devotee of the master. Uh, well, yes. I mean, I knew I would be compared. Uh, but then again, it was a new exercise as well. No one's ever done a sequel 22 years after the original and uh, knowing Hitchcock I, uh, I knew that he saw himself as part of a tradition that went back to the silent era and the German expressionist filmmakers and I feel now that he's gone perhaps I'm carrying on a, a tradition not just uh, following in his footsteps. When you met him shortly before the filming of Topaz out at USC did it ever enter your mind that someday you would be doing this sequel. No, it didn't. And in fact, the first Hitchcock film I ever saw was Psycho, which I saw when I was 12. And uh, if someone had said to me then, well, you better watch this carefully because one day you'll be doing the sequel to it, I would have been uh, amazed. Even two years ago, I would have been amazed. I'm going to ask this of Anthony Perkins later, but uh, of course, he's lived with this role a long time. Now, did you let him have his head as far as how that character was handled? Well, yes and no. Uh, it was a little like uh, setting up the house again. There were people working on the picture who'd worked on the original, but uh, it seemed to me to be more important that the picture be true for a spectator than, than for someone who was inside, mm -hmm. as it were. And in the first few days, uh, it, Tony and I found that collaborating, we could find the character better. You know, you need a mirror, and I was Tony's mirror. Most of our viewers have not seen Psycho 2 yet. I would be curious if you could alert them to something you are especially happy about, or something that you found especially challenging. Uh, well, I think uh, I think the the, the thing the, the most difficult thing was to bring the mother back. You know, we felt that the presence of the mother in the house was the most important, uh, one of the most important elements of Psycho and evoking that feeling and suggesting that Mother was back was something that uh, I did a lot of work on the storyboards and with the camera and the editing and the lighting to get that feeling that there was another presence in the house. And when Richard Franklin says that Mama is in the house, as you will see when you see Psycho 2, he is not kidding indeed. Richard Franklin, thank you very much. Thank Director you. of Psycho 2 a Universal Oaks production, and we're going to be talking to Anthony Perkins after these words. Here on AIM Live, we're talking to Richard Franklin, the director of Psycho 2, a Universal Oaks production. Richard, you're one of a new breed of filmmakers, I suppose, like a Peter Bogdanovich, for example, who have a long-standing devotion to some of the American masters of cinema, most notably Hitchcock, who's English also, and John Ford. It's interesting, I think, that a director now can be approaching a medium that has its own traditions. Can that become a stumbling block, however, to confront that burden of tradition and yet strike out on your own? No, I don't think so. I think it's somewhere that one can start. I mean, it was tougher for them in a way that they had to make the traditions. Of course, they had the whole tradition of Western art to work with, but uh, uh, I, I think it's interesting. You know, a, a fellow Australian, uh, Percy Granger, the composer, mm -hmm. came to America in the 20s and uh, uh, well, I guess it was the third. I think he and, walked and, there, and, as a matter of fact, didn't he? <laughs> and, uh, and, and wrote a suite based on George Gershwin's music for Porgy and Bess. And uh, I think, you know, that what I'm doing is in the best artistic traditions, you know, variations on a theme by. I was fortunate enough to study with Hitchcock and 
also to meet John Ford on, on one occasion, not that that relates specifically to this film, but uh, you couldn't help but learn by talking to those men. But it's fascinating now to see a new generation of filmmakers building upon the structure or gr groundwork set up by other older filmmakers. That's right, but that's part of the whole tradition of art, and mm -hmm. film is an art. Now, what other filmmakers do you personally enjoy? Give me a sense of who Richard Franklin is in terms of what he appreciates. Well, I, I'm fond of the old filmmakers, you know. I, I, uh, I'm a great fan of Frank Capra, Ford and Hitchcock we've mentioned. Ernst Lubitsch is one of my favorite directors. I wish someone would let me do a, a comedy. I love musicals. Vincent Minnelli's a, mm -hmm. a favorite director. My other favorite thriller director, I suppose, is Fritz Lang. But um, uh, of the modern directors, I, I'm uh, fond of uh, Coppola and, and Spielberg. Uh, well, since you like Lang and since you've t discussed expressionism generally in a film like Psycho 2, for mm -hmm. example, you must have a certain theatrical sense then about setting up a scene as opposed to a more realistic style. Oh, yes, yes. I, I enjoy uh, or I enjoyed the experience of working on stages and mm -hmm. manufacturing everything from the floor up uh, as we have on, uh, on Psycho 2 as opposed to working on location in Australia. Now, Having said all that, I was just thinking about the location work in road games. There is, I see nothing really theatric in the strict sense about road games at all. Well, all the, in, in a way, it's set on the Nullarbor Plain, which is a plain with no trees that takes three days to drive across <laughs> in the middle of Australia. But it also takes place inside the cabin of a truck. And, uh, and in a way, it, it was claustrophobic as well. I it was see. that contrast okay. of claustrophobia and the outdoors. Nonetheless, so. Psycho 2 and uh, Road Games, some parameters. Where are we going next, Richard? What's happening uh, I'm working on a, a remake of uh, a picture called The Window, uh, which was written by Cornell Woolrich, who wrote Real yes, Window indeed. for Hitchcock. William Irish. Uh, that's right. It will star Henry Thomas, the boy from E.T., and uh, it's a story about the boy who cried wolf. It's a young boy sees a murder, no one believes that's him. That's Ted Tetzlaff, I that's believe. That's right. right. Yeah. One of Hitchcock's cameramen. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we come back to Hitchcock. Not a bad place to begin, not a, a bad place to end up either, I guess. No, well, I, so I hope somebody will ask me to do a musical or a comedy <laughs> or something one day, but I see nothing wrong with specializing right. in what uh, I hope I'm uh, good at doing. Whether he's on the road or on stage, that's Richard Franklin, a devotee of the history of cinema, and now the director of Psycho 2 from Universal Oaks. Thank you very much, Richard Thank Franklin. You. Thank you.